recovered the grip, the stance, the measurements, the necessary measurements to get accuracy into a shot. Now we have established the actions of the pivot, and a pivot is a multiple action. It's not just single, it's not just rotation, it's a shift, and it's a turn. But if you to turn now with two feet on the ground, if they stay on there, the body's not going to function like it should. If one leg has to detach to make an axis, like you're going to hang a door on a pole, and this is going to turn anterior in front of you, so they can go back. So to do this, it's necess necessary to have the knees working in this fashion. I'm just dealing now with knees and ankles. I flex the knee, the left knee. Flex means to bend, flex it. Now there's very little weight on any part except the ball of the left foot, right? Mm -hmm. Now I extend the right leg and by extending it, look at my chin. It stayed the same position from the ground. But if I flex that knee, the hair would drop. It will drop. And uh, most people are advocating not extending it. But when you extend it, you establish an axle, a straight up and down axle. Then you turn this door to the right or in front of. So I'm pushing down and out with this knee on an angle. I'm not coming this hip against that hip that blocks. So I'm now transferred here, and now I can turn. Oh, what a free-looking yeah. move. You see, the thing of it is, I'm not trying to turn the right hip back. That could break down this axle, understand? Mm-hmm. As far as you're concerned right now, it's the spine and the leg. The, it's consisting of an axle, understand? Right. Now, for that to be in a position of balance, you got to have it. The hip on the outside of the right ankle here my hips are on the inside, but I got a two-foot stance. Now I've got a one. Now so I that can, would be the backswing. That would be the back. I've set up like this is a part of my spine. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom part of my spine now. Then I can turn in here, and I got support. But when you got it this way, look what it does. Hmm. So, so what we have to do is shorten the left side. How do you shorten it? Flex this joint. Flex this joint. Now this side can come under. See? Boy, what a beautiful, yeah. just natural move. You see, move. this side could come over. Now the shoulder don't go up that way. It comes under. But it comes that way. Understand? Mm-hmm. Then this arm, as this shoulder goes out, this arm is coming back. Hmm. Now, to establish this thing, I want you to get the, that rope and show the knee and he, ankle exercise, but we can go into that a little bit later. Let's okay. go into this a little deeper because we're only taking it back to here. Now, what what happens when you take it back to here? The hands are, the right hand is dorsal flexion, like that. The left arm is turning into a pronated position, and you're doing a radial flexion here. So as you go back, that thumb is pointed up the line from that ball up to that right shoulder, and the right shoulder is turning back that. You're not going up up the line that you want to go, the ball to go on. You're making a curve. You're dealing now with circles. Mm -hmm. And the only time you can get centrifugal force is with the circle. You have to have a restrainer. When you're throwing something, it, it doesn't have any restraint. It's free. It's in free fight. Mm -hmm. When you have an attached end, you're you're controlling the size of the circle. Oh, and that's only, only then do you create centrifugal force. And is that what we are trying to create to get more power in a golf swing? On, on, on the pivot that you're talking about, like to me, this is the, absolutely the most incredible thing that you ever taught me. Yeah. And what is, it's, it's different than, you know, some of the modern day teaching is that it involves three planes of motion as opposed to just one. Yeah. Could you kind of let me explain that just a little bit? Well, you, you see, when you shift this way, that's one plane, right? Now, you, you're going this way with this, this leg, like it's coming out in front of that leg. 
-hmm. Now, I have a bottom part of the spine. The bottom part of the spine is the right leg. But now if you turn this way, where's, your, where's the bottom half of your, your spine? You have no support, right? Mm -hmm. If you have no support, you can't hang a door on anything that will work except the upright. So if you try to turn your right hip, then you, your initial motion You're was You're putting yourself turn. in a negative position, and it'll cause you to have to loop the club into a figure eight to get to the ball. But a turn, so, like, so if a person, almost everybody that plays golf, has some kind of rotary motion. Yeah, the rotary motion, though, is not the way that it's being taught. It's, most of the books will tell you to, to turn your right hip back inside of your right angle. Then if you do, you're standing on your left leg. I've never seen a pitcher pitch off his left foot if he's throwing right-handed. No, he steps it's on the right, and he steps to the left. Now, if you're, you're already here like this, you're on the left, now how can you step? It says that the longest journey starts with a step. <laughs> the longest journey starts with a step. So I'm stepping over here to the right side and doing an upswing. I'm going to step over to the left side. Now I've got a bottom half of my spine supporting the upper half. Mm -hmm. Now it's not supporting here, there's two hips supporting it, but it has to be one to rotate that right side. So if you, if you just had a, say like, if you just had, if you started trying to turn first, or turning a rotary motion, your, then head, your head is swaying. Your head will instinctually, and shoulder, even shoulder. if you kept it on there, it would almost be like you said earlier, that someone could just, might as well come and cut your right leg off because you don't, it negates all the force if that you're you trying none, to wind you up. None. It's just like a, what you call a building destroyer. It's a big hunk of cement on a pendulum. They pull it back and let it go, and man, it, it's This motion destroyed. right here? Yeah. Like, a, like, a, like the lateral motion, like these motions when, you know, the people that look, view the tape, when you lift them out and they, they, they become individual motions as opposed to being blended, they look amplified, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Like if someone was to say, well, boy, that looks like a sway. Yeah. You know, if you move like this and it's not accompanied with something. Yeah. Well, what would you do about consistency if it's doing just the opposite? Turn this thing up here. Now your head is going there in the head there. That's a metronome, and this is a pendulum with your head here. And I move your weight to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, now that that leg becomes part of your spine. Yeah, it's just one long deal. It's like I start off on a two-foot balance. Yeah. I shift to a one-foot balance. And then, you, then you just swing your arms back from there. Yeah. Up the oblique plane. That turns your shoulders. Right. And then when I'm coming back down, though, yeah. now all the slack is out between all the joints at this point. Right. Now you have to get over here. Now you're just like you're gonna, a pitcher is going to step over here like this. Now you're coming underhand throw upward. Uh, like so? Yeah. All right. And most everybody got it up here like this and say, I got to come down the ball right that way. If you come that way, you'll swing in around your left leg. You drive the ball into the ground. It won't go anywhere. But the blending of those planes of motion, you have like a, like on the pivot, we have like a little lateral flexion. And then this way, see, my chest can wind up over my right leg. Yeah, it? that's right. You I, but if I was turning, see, you, I, I mean, you, I, it'd just be, I'd be back shifting, right? Yeah, you have to do the opposite to get out. So it, it's negating the force. So really, the, 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 the initial motion on the backswing has to be a little bit lateral, doesn't it's, it? It's a lateral tilt of the spine. Okay, and it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, you're shifting your head. Okay, but if I shift over I'm to the right. I'm my spine out from underneath my chin, like that. But it's not one motion, it's a compound motion, Well, right? sure, they see, the, see, as you're swinging this way, that's the first action. Now, look what it's doing. It, it, that's taking my arm down to there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's also making this ilium crest, that's this left hip, cave in underneath the rib cage like that mm -hmm. to establish a one one plane from your neck down to the ball like so and now see this is that leg is the bottom half of the spine mm -hmm. now what have you got here like this you don't have any support mm -hmm. unless you but when you but if i if i just see it's not just one move laterally no as i turn see my as i move just the breath you know to the right with yeah. my hip yeah see as i turn this left hip moves in towards it between the, the ball. hand and arm and shoulder to, out toward the ball. And it's kind of a retro motion, isn't it? Well, they don't get retro until you got over to here. All right. Now, look here. I'm coming here, and I turn to here. 
Now, as you go up the swing, now look here. My hip, my hip is on the outside of my leg, and I can stand at one leg. I'm 70 percent. Lost of the motion in that leg. New York so three this. years ago. Yeah. There, I'm here. Now, unless, unless you have a spine that goes from your, this is the sternum slot right down here to that leg, you don't have any chance of hitting the ball with any consistency. Mm -hmm. So another thing, too, like you see a lot of golf injuries, you know, if you're in a flex knee position, yes. the only thing, like if I'm flexing my knees, here, watch out here, Michael. Uh, if I'm flexing my knees like this and I try to turn like this, I don't have any support for my upper body. Well, here. you're spinning on the bottom of your spine, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, your position of power is in the negative position. Okay, so if I did this, this would this would explain why a lot of people take that fourth and fifth lumbar and just have tremendous tear it right tear, up. Because that's what. But it's, when we work our knees like this, there's no pressure on it. There's no pressure. Help put a 500 pound sack of sugar on it. I there, used to hold four 200 pound men on my shoulders. And if I stood up there with my knees flexed, there's no way. I'd, I'd let them climb up on me. Just, and just stack up. And I'm standing here like this with my hamstrings, the quadriceps in a locked position, mm -hmm. all of this, the fasciolate, they sheep, all these four muscles coming together here. But if they're loose and like, like that, nothing. You have no balance. Mm -hmm. But the one thing, like the blend. The whole key to the swing is making a single spine from your. This is the sternum slot here. Mm -hmm. Now that there's a single spine. All right, show them the spine on my back. Okay. All right, here's the yeah. spine, and yeah. so we're going to be right there. Yeah. Now, from here down that leg is one. One. It's like a pole, isn't it? That's exactly. And this this is like a gate turning in to your right leg.